what we're looking at now is we're looking at how do you combine numbers together. We're not going to deal with decimals at all. So integers, 2-2 two, two addition of integers. Integers are going to be numbers that don't have decimals. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and so on, but also negatives. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, and that way. Um, so we're going to be adding together positives and negatives, essentially. Sometimes two positives, sometimes two negatives, and so on. But I want to look at just, I put it just kind of a token number line up here. This is kind of how I visualize it when I do these things. So I'm going to say, when adding on a number line, you go which direction? And I'm going to say, well, I have 5 plus 3. I'm going to just pick, I wouldn't put this on your number line. I'd probably just watch if I were you. Um, but if 5 is there, 5 plus 3 equals 8. So we know 5 plus 3 is 8. Well, 8 is going to be over here on my number line. Do you agree when you add 3, you really just go 3 jumps to the right? So I have 1, 2, 3. So when adding a number on a number line, go right. And do you agree that would also be true if instead of with my 5, I had a negative 5? And I wouldn't mess up your notes with this either. But if I had a negative 5 plus 3, I still am going to go 3 to the right because I'm adding. But I don't get to 8. I get to a negative 2. Because I'm kind of working my way back towards 0, but negative 5 plus 3 would get me to a negative 2. So it's negative 2 is 3 to the right of negative 5. We good? So whenever you're adding a number to something, you're moving right that much on the number line. When subtracting a number, so 10 minus 4 gives us 6. So 10 minus 4 equals 6. Well, if I were to have a number line, maybe I'll just put one down here. When I'm on a number line, I'm starting at 10. To get down to 6, I had to move to the left. Okay, my jumps are terrible that way. But anyway, so you go left. You're going left on a number line when you subtract. And so I kind of killed the notes a little bit. But you at least with me up to there? Yep. Yeah. If I have this 3 minus 5, 3 minus 5 is negative, negative 2. And what's happening there is I start at my 3. I have a 0 right there, maybe we could say. 1, 2, 3. Put some other tick marks on there. But when I'm going minus 5, that means I have to go 5 to the left. left. So as I do my 5 jumps, it takes me how many jumps to get down to 0? Three. 3. So 3 of my 5 jumps are there, but I have to get 5. So I have to go 2 more, which gets me down to my negative 2. You with me? Yeah. And that's kind of how I view it when you're crossing 0, is if the second number is larger than the first, sometimes you're going to be passing 0, going from positives to negatives, going from negatives to positives. So in my mind, I kind of think, well, how many does it take me to get to 0? Then how many do I have to go after that? And that's how far you end up on the other side of 0. And we can talk about some of this as we go on. But questions initially on that? We're okay? No, yes. Okay. And then, if you're given two math operations, simplify it by making it one operation. One operation. Or if you wanted to, you could say one sign. Basically, we're trying to do just one thing. And what I mean by that is in this section, they're going to start throwing things like this at you. Eight plus a negative three. Well, if we have a plus a negative 3, I don't like trying to do that in my head, adding negatives. I have never have. I'm trying to say, what's the one sign we could put right here? Does it become an addition or does it become a subtraction? Addition, subtraction. Subtraction. That this line here, adding a negative is the same as subtracting. And if you're on a number line and you're subtracting, you always go right or always go left? Uh, left. So on a number line, you go left that many. We'll talk about this more in section three, where like two negatives or subtractions will kind of cancel and become an addition. But if you only have one subtraction sign, it's going to make it subtraction. So uh, if you have plus a negative, it just makes it a minus. So this becomes an 8 minus 3, which equals 5. The second one here is the exact same problem. I just tried writing it a different way. It's another way to say 8 plus a negative 3 right there. 
Um, so it becomes just an 8 minus 3, still a 5. We okay on that one? Should I draw those out with number lines? Probably not. It's all positive. Been doing that since like second grade, maybe. All right. This next one where I have my negative 13 plus a negative 24, that's negative 13. Well, it might be tempting to take and do this. If I jump down here to this line, I'm a little bit ahead. But a sign applies to the number that's right after it. Or if you have a number, the sign, the positive, negative, the plus, minus, that's right in front of the number is kind of a sign to that number. It's linked to that number. So I have this negative 13 here. Then I have a plus a negative 24. This plus a negative becomes minus. I can't combine this subtraction sign or this negative and this subtraction because this one applies to the 13 and this one applies to the 24. It's kind of like we have two clumps. They'll call them terms later on. We have this minus 13 and we have this minus 24. Okay. Negative 13 minus 24. Well, my negative 13, if I put it there, Degree zero is going to be over here somewhere. Zero has to be to the right of it. So I'm starting at my negative 13. When I subtract 24, am I going 24 to the right or 24 to the left? Left, left because we're subtracting. So I need to go 24 more this way. Does anybody know what that number is going to end up being? Go for it, Samuel. Nice, negative 37. So my final answer here is negative 37. If you ignore the positive negativeness of it, what did we have to do to 13 and 24 to get 37? Go for it, Brent. You're actually adding them, and which is a little bit weird. But if I look at it as though I start 13 negative, I'm going 24 more negative. So it's kind of like you're doing 13 plus 24 to figure out how negative you actually end up. Does that kind of make sense? Um, yeah. For this last part, the book tries to go through, if you have more than two numbers, there's different orders you could combine these numbers in that would make it easier to do it in your head. And, and here's the way I'm going to try to explain it. And I'm hoping this makes way more sense than the book's way. That if you look at each of those like we were doing before as like terms, we have this 125, there's no sign in front, what operation could I put here, a plus or a minus, and not change it? Right there, it's like there's a positive. Do you agree it's a positive? So we can look at this as though it's a plus 125. Good? So if it was a minus, it'd have to be written in. My second thing here, then, is I have this positive 11, so plus 11, and I have a minus 50. We could go through and combine those in order. So say 125 plus 11 is 130. 6, 136 minus 50 is 86. So you get the answer is 86. So that's where we're going to end up. But the argument they're trying to make is it'd be easier to add 125, well, combine 125 and the 50. If you keep the sign with it, I could take this negative 50 and put it next and say, all right, I have a minus 50. And then I have this positive 11. So you can move around the clumps if it's all addition, as long as you keep the sign that's in front of a number with the number. And 125 minus 50 is 75. 75, and 75 plus 11 is 86. 86. It's just easier to get there. So if you have a string of things that are all like addition, subtraction, you can mess with the order somewhat. Question? The next one, the book's trying to say, I have this positive 7. What's probably easiest to combine with a positive 7? Well, this, wow, well, maybe I should write this way. So I have a positive 7. I have plus 3. Plus a negative 5 is the same as minus 5. And this plus a negative 7 is the same as minus 7. Minus 7. And so if we look at these as being like four kind of clumps, and if you don't do it the way the book thinks is smart, that's fine, as long as you get the right answer. You're just trying to make it where you're not as calculator dependent. The book tries to make the argument that putting these two together first is easiest because a positive 7 minus 7 just becomes 0, zero that those two cancel out. 
So these two combined together are just the zero. And then you still have the plus three minus five. And plus three minus five is negative, negative two. two. So it's kind of like a zero minus two just gives you a negative two. You know? But you don't have to do it this way. If you're much more of a, that's dumb. Seven plus three is 10, ten. minus five, five. five. minus seven, two. negative two. Boom, there's the, I mean, that's totally fine. Totally fine. Should I even do the last one or should we call it quits? I mean, last one real fast. Negative 75 plus 85, and this here just becomes a. Minus. Minus 25, yes? In my mind, I'd rather do negative 75. Minus 25 plus 85. Can I convince you that's true? And this first part, negative 75 minus 25 is? We're starting at negative 75 and we're going 25 to the negative 100. Because we're, we're starting at negative 75. Well, they're going positive 75. But if we're starting at negative 75, we have to go 25 more to the left on the number lines. We're going more negative, down to negative 100, plus 85 equals negative, negative 15. Because the plus 85 has taken us back to the right 85, not quite enough to get to positive. We're at the negative 15. That one's a little bit nicer, I think, because if you did them in order, You'd switch from negative to positive when you combine these two. Then you go from positive back to negative again. So it's kind of nice just getting all the negatives together at once. But it's kind of personal preference.